the circumstance. Look at God instead of the struggle. Look at his capability, his ability, his power, his might, and his strength instead of the struggle. Looking at the struggle will wear you. Happy Wednesday, everybody. So good to be with you again. Look, we're believing God's got something great for you right in the middle of your week, in the middle of a test, of a storm, or a struggle. As we lift him up, come on. Real simple, sing it out. Come on, say Your praise from my heart to your ears. All the glory is yours, not forevermore. Here I worship, all we can give is for you. We're here for you.
love you. We bless you. We honor and adore you. We give you our everything tonight, withholding nothing. Father, we've tasted and we've seen that you are God, you are good, and we want more of you. Somebody who's ready for the more of God tonight, let heaven know what the praise is coming out of your mouth from your heart tonight. Come on, watching online, let heaven know you're ready for the more of God. Let heaven know you're ready for the more of God. Father, whatever you have for me, your word says you take us from glory to glory to glory. So God, we're ready for the ride tonight. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to show us, whatever revelation you want to give and pour it on us tonight, God, we make room for you. We're hungry for you. We're available to you, God. We read in your word that you do miracles. Father, flow through us tonight. We read in your word you do signs. Flow through us tonight. We read in your word you can do wonders. Flow through us tonight. Holy Ghost, heal the sick when we pray. for do what you're famous for do what we read about what we've heard about and what we've seen you do before show yourself strong now come on let the hungry people lift up those hands tonight as a sign of surrender come on international sign of surrender yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so we dance and we sing we worship you are king, yes, and we worship, you are king, you're worthy, Lord, yeah, and we worship, come on, let's just sound, fill that room, you are king, yeah, 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 we worship, yes, you are king, oh, you're worthy, Lord, yeah, yeah, and we worship, you are king, we're here for you, yeah, yes, here for you, God. There is no fear, cause I believe, there is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, yes, my fortress, Lord, over and over, over, Lord, yeah. I have a hope found in your precious name. I have a strength, yeah, found in your grace. Your faithfulness, yeah, 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 my fortress. Make way through the waters, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for. Hey. What you are famous for. Say what? Shut the mouths of lions, uh -huh. bring dragons to life. What's your saying, team? What you are famous for. Uh, yeah. What you are famous for. God, I believe in you and never receive. Choose to believe in you, yeah. Come on, say. God, we want relationship with you while you're working wonders. Ah, uh -huh, say.
you're walking through. We just want to speak faith into your life tonight. We want to speak hope into your life tonight. We want to speak expectation in your life tonight. Why did you lay down the dream? God didn't give up on you. Why did you lay down your expectation? God has not given up on you. His promises are yes and amen. I feel I hear somebody saying, I'm too far from God. I've made too many mistakes. Look, his blood is enough to cover every sin and every mistake and every failure. Nobody's too far from the love of God. We call you home tonight into love, into grace, into the blood of Jesus. His promise is still on the table for you. Still on the table. He's still a healing God. He's still a healing God. You've been sick a long time, but I think about the woman with that issue. Whatever your issue is, tonight. God's going to make a way tonight. My wayward son or daughter is coming home in the name of Jesus. Type in what you need God to do and we're going to stand in faith and agree with you that he's going to do it. He's never failed you and he never will and he never will oh yeah and he never will oh yeah yeah and he never will oh la la and he never will oh no no So come on, while you're standing in faith, right there where you are, joining us online, even the few of us that are here in this room, stand in faith and agree together that God is going to bring you all the way to the finish line. All the way, all the way. He is the author, but he is also the finisher of our faith. And God, we choose to believe the good work that you began in us. You will be faithful to complete. And eyes haven't seen and ears have not heard. Father, we declare our best is yet to come our best is yet to come you need to declare that out type it in the comment section our best is yet to come if you believe it shout yeah in this room and right where you are hallelujah oh yeah we believe you God we believe you God we believe you God we stand in faith we stand in agreement with your word, huh? and we choose to worship you while we wait. We choose to bless you while we wait. We choose to love, honor, and adore you. Hey, hey. Come on, put your focus on him. You, Lord. You, Lord, you are worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one, uh, and no one say that. worship you for me. Come on, walk down memory lane. For all the things you've done. All the things you've done for me. And no one, no one, no one hey. worship you for me. So come on, right in the middle of your week, tell God, here's my worship. Here's my worship. What you gonna give him? Come on. All of my worship. God, here's my worship. Receive all of my worship. All of my worship. What a privilege. God hears my, hears my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Yeah, yeah. Father, receive it. Yes. Receive my all of my worship. Ah. All of my worship. Every season and every circumstance. Yes, you are God. Ah. Nobody.
nobody can tell his goodness like you can tell and testify for all the all the all the all the things yes oh God we give you glory cause no to shut you up but the greater one is living on the inside of you hey. yes as long as I am breathing you can count on me to be the one to return to bless you to thank you oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Uh. come on lavish him with your praises come on right there where you are right there come on say and I will not be silent no. Tell him. Just what? 
Is a world changer. We'll make it a duet tonight, okay? okay let's do this. All let's right. Do this. What are you doing here? I am a student at Valor Christian College. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am. Where are you from, woman of God? I'm from Miami, Florida. Oh, come on, Miami. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <clears throat> tell the good people of God what you're majoring in while you're here. Music ministry. <laughs> Amen. We got a few things coming up, huh? Yes. A so, lot of things. It's the yes. heart. So tell them. Okay, so we have classes starting next week, Monday. We're so excited. We have new and returning students coming, and it's not too late to enroll. Call right. the number on your screen. Call um, the ambassadors. We have student ambassadors waiting to sign you up. Yeah. Or go on our website, valorcollege.edu. It is not too late. Right now, don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. And for the first time in a long time, our pastor what? is coming back to the classroom Come on to now. teach legacy repairers of the breach. Yeah, yeah. You can sign up, young or old, it doesn't matter who you are, sign up. Text legacy to the number on your screen or call or go on valorcollege.edu slash legacy yes. and sign up for those classes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Also, yes. on Sundays, yes. you can join us online or in person and worship. Listen, Pastor has been dropping revelation on us these past couple of Sundays. You don't want to miss out, okay? Right. Online or in person. Yes, and that same man that will be here on Sunday mm -hmm. is the same man that's going to be speaking tonight. <laughs> that's right. Pastor Parsley, it is an honor to welcome our pastor, a general in the faith. Pastor Parsley, we love you. <laughs> We love these Valor Christian College students. Jacolia, Victoria, that handsome guy next to Victoria, Valor Christian College graduate. Doesn't really look like he was a guy that was living in his car homeless in California, does he? No, God has so blessed you. And we are so thankful. You and you met your beautiful wife, Katie. Got the ring by spring at Valor Christian College. And you tied that knot, how long ago? How long have you been married? Uh, nine years. Nine years. My goodness, seems like three years. But that beauty that you got running around your house, I saw her today, she was jumping, making, making a slicky slide out of the couch cushions. She was jumping down there. Well, are you blessed? I can't hear you. You gotta type it in there. I'm in here all by myself. 
I kind of have enjoyed these Wednesday nights. I think this is the 26th Wednesday night in a row. Isn't that something? I've only missed one, and I didn't choose to miss that one. The team made me miss it, and I, I'm not forgiving them. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk in offense that they, yep, yep, I've decided I'm just gonna be offended. Yep, I'm just gonna join the mob. I'm gonna be offended by everything and everybody. No, I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll forgive them. I think I'll do what Jesus did on the rugged, angry, mean, biting beam called Calvary when he said, Father, first thing he said, forgive them for they don't even know what they're doing. He kind of said they're not very intelligent, so just, so just forgive them. So when somebody offends you, just think to yourself, well, you may not be the brightest bulb in the box, so I'll just go ahead and forgive you. Maybe your Happy Meal is one fry short, you understand. So we love you, but I'm, I'm look, I'm a, what kind of preacher am I? I'm an audience participation preacher. That means if you don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. And you start off tonight with a great big hallelujah. You start out with a bless the Lord. You start out with he's better, better to me than all of you put together. You let me know where you're watching from and you sign up for my class, Legacy. Now these young folks like Jacoli and Victoria, they try to be nice to pastor. You know, they say first time in a long time because the last time, how, how old are you, Victoria? I'm 18. You are 18 years old. My great God. Now, if you have, wed, if you, if you have proposals toward Miss Victoria, you may send them to my office. Yes. At which time I will not open them, I will stamp them. You ain't even starting to be ready for a young woman of God like that one. She is so full of God. Her pastor is here tonight. All the way from Whittier, California. Run up here, Pastor Brian. Come on. Come on. I want, to, I want these folks to say hello to you all over the world. Look, they're already there from India. They're already there from Trinidad and Tobago. And they're getting started. They're there from the United Kingdom and Sydney, Cindy in Granada and Frank in Montreal, Canada. Ken, they're from Kenya, the Netherlands, Barbados, South Korea. They're already joining us. Bahamas, China, Mexico, Haiti, Switzerland. Argentina, Norway, Italy, Greenland, the United Arab Emirates, Belgium, Puerto Rico, who else? Sweden, Denmark, Jamaica, France, is that it? Nigeria, Australia, they just keep joining. So Finland, Malaysia, Fiji, Benin, Singapore, we are so glad to have you all. Is there anybody from the United States? You could, you could let us know you're there as well. Say hello to these folks, Pastor Brian. Tell them why you're here. I am so excited to be here. We have been talking with our amazing pastor about City Harvest Network. Oh, my great God. And we are getting ready to plant churches, yep. revitalize churches. Yep. We are so excited what God is doing. We were just meeting with the pastor, the Russian harvest pastor, yes. about doing ministry in Russia yes. and Ukraine. Yes. We, we, we're going to fulfill the Lester Summerall prophecy. Run up here and stand beside me. Come on me. up here, Pastor. This is our great City Harvest Network, Russian Harvest Church pastor, and we love him so much. And I told Pastor Brian, he was telling me all the nations. How, how many churches overseas have joined City Harvest just in the last week or two? Uh, over 70 at this point. Over point. 70 churches, like from where? Togo. Cuba. We have one that is in Russia, one that is in the Ukraine. And we're going to have a lot more. A lot Many more. Many more. Yes. Amen. It is amazing what Jesus is doing through City Harvest Network. In the middle of a pandemic. Think of that. Think of that. We are growing like never before. Whoa. 
you know, pastor, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Come on. This is the greatest time for the church to reach souls for Jesus. We didn't come to play games. We come to reach souls. We come to advance the kingdom of God. We're not playing games at City Harvest Network. You need to see the link and join City Harvest Network. I don't know if we can get it up there, but we need to get it up there. There are pastors that need to reach out and join what's going on at City Harvest Network. It is unbelievable. City Harvest, one word, cityharvest.network. Come on. Cityharvest.network. Cityharvest.network. Go there. Get connected with people that are world changers. Get connected with City Harvest Network. Pastors like Brian Bolt, pastors like this great pastor from Russia, well, from Latvia. Latvia. Yes. Do we have any churches in Latvia? Yeah, we do. By the end of the week, we will. By the end of the week. (laughs) We have a church that is in his hometown that wants to join us. Do you know why he got connected with World Harvest Church and City Harvest Network? Because our pastor, Dr. Lester Sumrall, used to go to his church in Latvia and conduct mighty revivals. Revival is all over the world. And you need to be a part of it. If you're in an old, dead, cold, dry church, Don't walk out of there. Run out of there, man. Get out of there. Get connected to where the life of God is. Well, I got a word for you tonight, pastors. I mean a word for you. So take your seats. We got Louise from Texas and Zoltan and Gabriella, who never miss, from Florida and Grace in California. I want you to get ready. Turn your Bible, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, Ryan in Pennsylvania, Patricia in Michigan, Daniel in Kentucky, Nancy in Oklahoma. I'm going to continue tonight my series within a series. The overall series is the last letter, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, folks have been asking me, Pastor, how long do you think you're going to stay in the book of Revelation? I may stay until Jesus comes and catches us up in the rapture of the church because we are the generation destined for experiential manifestation and revelation of the glory of God soon and very soon. The crack of his long whip is going to billow out like the crash of a thousand cannons. And it won't matter where you are. You may be like my family. You may be a coal miner three miles under the crusty surface of the earth digging in 12-inch coal. Or you may be like I've been many, many times, more than I can count, flying at 43,000 feet above the earth, headed somewhere to preach the gospel. But in that moment, if your blood bought, if your blood washed, if your Holy Ghost filled and your water baptized, you are coming out of here like metal drawn to a magnet. Are you hearing me? When the white hairs on the head of damnation grow black with horror, there is a group that will rejoice, not hang their heads. He's coming faster than the fleetest hoof ever struck a pavement, faster than a wheel ever turned upon an axle. Jesus is coming again. Now, I'm going to put out a little challenge, Dr. Lowe, because I know across the width and breadth of the City Harvest Network, our men and women of God are preaching on end-time revival. And so when I look through my Instagram feed or I look through Facebook or I see what's being said on Twitter, I wonder what the rest of the preachers in America are even thinking about. We are living in the closing chapters of human history. Would you under God find the book of Daniel? 
Would you find the book of Ezekiel? Would you find Matthew 24? Would you find the book of Revelation and let your folks become as the sons of Issachar, rightly knowing the times and what the church should do as a result of living in the time they're living in. I challenge you to get the Bible open and start proclaiming truth. I'm going to talk to you more later. I'm in Revelation chapter 13 as we will continue our series within a series. The series within a series is the man and the mark. And we have spent, I believe, the last three sessions from Revelation 13. And I've got about 10 more from Revelation 13. So strap in. Elkhart, Pastors Nate and Carly, welcome back. We love you. The Callaways, April and Connie are watching from there as well. Elder Mike and Diana Yoder, Benzetta, we love you all. All right, are you ready? Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood on the sand of the sea. Of course, this is John the Revelator. He's 20 miles off the coast of Ephesus. There's nothing there but the wild beast for company. He has been boiled in oil three different times and refused to die. Do you understand you can refuse to be refused? Do you understand you can deny to be denied? I rebuke everything the devil's put on you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Ryan in Pennsylvania, Patricia in Michigan, Daniel in Kentucky, Nancy in Oklahoma, and everybody viewing online right now, a mighty wave of healing virtue flowing to you right now, breaking the power of every sickness, every disease, every pain, every Malady, every malfunction, every demon spirit, every lie perpetrated by the advancing armies of the alien antichrist come out of you, set you free in Jesus' name. Jamaica's joining us. Canada is joining us. Brazil is joining us. So John, who wrote not only the gospel of John, but also the book of the Revelation. There are not revelations. There's only one revelation, and it's of Jesus Christ. He says, I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns. Sounds like most church boards. God anoints a man. God anoints a family, and then he anoints people to support that vision. Anything with more than one head is called a monster. Watch now. He said this thing had 10 horns, crowns on his horns, blasphemous names on his head. Verse 16, he causes all both small and great both rich and poor, both free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead so that no one may buy nor sell except he has the mark or the name of the beast the, or the number of his name. Here's a call for wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. It's the number of a man. His number, six, six, six. Now, actually, that mark will become your license to live. Not your driver's license, not your marriage license. A license to live. There is a holy and an unholy trinity in the book of Revelation. God the Father, Satan. God the Son, the Antichrist. God the Holy Spirit, the false prophet. 
we are now three and a half years into the tribulation period. We have revealed here two beasts. Beast number one, a worldwide political leader, and beast number two, the false prophet, a worldwide religious leader. I'll draw your attention quickly to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. Now, iniquity is not really a word you understand, but you do understand this next word, which is the same as iniquity, if you've been watching the news. It's called lawlessness. And the Bible says that spirit is already working, but only he who now restrains him will continue to restrain him until he is taken out of the way. Psalm 119, verse 133. Establish my footsteps in your word and do not, he's praying to God now, allow any iniquity, any lawlessness to have dominion over me. I'm gonna prove to you tonight that probably 70% of the church is operating currently in a spirit of lawlessness. They're called hyper grace, where they only believe in glory with no government. They only believe that grace is a license to live however you want. But the great, great evangelist Billy Graham had this to say, God can break the chain of every sin that binds you if, right there where you are, type in if, come on, I want a thousand ifs typed in right now, if you are willing to give up that sin. God, through Jesus Christ, said the great Dr. Billy Graham, comes into your heart and gives you the power to overcome sin. To as many as would receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Sheila in Florida, Jacqueline in Georgia, Patricia in Texas. I spent the last few messages outlining uh, a lot of details regarding the Antichrist rise to power. Now, you know it's after the rapture, so I'll share with you again. The Antichrist, if you're living right, is the greatest world leader you will never know. But I shared with you how those who remain after the rapture of the church will be required, underline, required to receive his mark. Now, scoffers have said from time immemorial, well, there's just no way, it's impossible for one man or one system to control the world's economy. CHN Pastor Eli Hernandez, we love you. How would it be possible for the entire world to depend on one man and one system? Well, I'm gonna share with you three ways that is all possible. Number one, I'll not spend much time with. He who controls the food controls the population. That's it. All you have to do to control any population is to control the food. And I believe right now we're on a trial run, my dear brother and sister. We're on a trial run for the rapture of the church or we are on a trial run for the greatest, mightiest, most powerful worldwide revival and awakening this planet has ever seen. Think about what we're doing right now. Look at all the nations that I've read off to you tonight. Now I'm adding the Philippines. I'm adding Zambia. I'm adding Ghana. Around the world, live. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? 
in January and February of 2020 that you walk into your local grocery store and see the shelves bare. Who'd have thought the streets would be empty? Whoever thought that a population like the great American masses would be walking around with their faces covered up with masks? Who would have ever thought that the morgues in the United States of America would overflow their capacities? Who would ever thought you'd watch your television set and see bodies in New York City piled up outside and being loaded into refrigerated semi-trucks? Who would have thought that our great Navy ships would have to be moved to Los Angeles and to New York City and be transformed into emergency wards for the dying. Businesses shuttered, liquor stores deemed essential. Oh, I'm going to. Now, wait a minute. Abortuaries. Uh, I'm going slow tonight because I'm feeling this thing. Abortuaries deemed by the government as essential. So we must continue our drunkenness and we must continue the American Holocaust, the slaughter of multiplied tens of millions of innocent lives while the business you worked for was ordered to close, while schools were ordered to shut down, while churches were ordered to close. And whatever you do, don't open your mouth and sing praises to God. 30 days. 30 days is all it took for the necessity being created of all of that from the socialist mainstream media with its fear-mongering tactics to put the greatest nation the world has ever known on lockdown and destroy the greatest economy and the strongest United States economy in world history. How soon we forget unemployment at 3.1%, historic black unemployment, historic women unemployment, historic Hispanic unemployment. We were told to wear masks. Get your mask. No. First, we were told, whatever you do, don't wear a mask. Dr. Fauci and all the rest, oh, masks are not necessary. They're not even helpful. Why, the leadership of Los Angeles, California, and New York City, as well as the leadership of the United States House of Representatives, all said, let's just go downtown and have a party. How soon we forget. Masks are now essential. Well, did the virus morph? Does it know when masks are good and when masks are bad? Or are we being manipulated? Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's sometimes good. Uh, depending upon whether you are rioting in the streets or singing the hymns of Jesus. The difference seems to be whether you are burning down churches or what we're doing at City Harvest Network, you're building churches. 
because we can go burn them down and nobody is going to do one thing to us. But God forbid that you should attempt to build a church. I'm talking about the United States of America where it's perfectly legal to burn your Bible in the middle of the streets, but not legal for you to gather together in a Bible study and read it. What kind of America are we living in? We were told there aren't 15 people brave enough to preach like this. We were told the China virus would infect 25 million people. Do you know how many are infected? Five million. They were 20 million off. And they want to run your health care. We were told 2.2 million Americans would surely die. 165,000, which is 165,000 too many. One is too many. But we were told 2.2 million would die. 165,000 have died. That means they were a little bit off. 2,199,835 off. Why am I telling you this? Pastor Fioz, I didn't see you over there. I had you on the platform with me with those 30 great churches in Pakistan, City Harvest Network, you Valor Christian College valedictorian, you. Wave at those people, they're looking at you right now. I, I want them to get this, Pastor Fiaz. I want you to understand tonight the two major tactics that Antichrist will use to manipulate the entire world into swearing allegiance to him are these. Number one, fear. Number two, lies. These will be the major weapons of the Antichrist. So tonight, let's move on a little bit and let's examine reason number two. Suppose, and I'm just saying suppose, Suppose that the Antichrist strategy will be far less obvious and far less devious than something as fundamental as restricting the food from the people. Now, now follow with me. Shane in Washington State, Margarita in New York, Elizabeth in Arizona. What if the Antichrist simply uses the tool that is readily at his disposal called the current culture? What if he uses the culture to do his conditioning for him so that his manipulation becomes something which people have already become accustomed to? Have you noticed lately this just staggers me. Have you noticed lately, America is a nation of laws. The Bible is a book of laws. The law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Law, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, Laws in America, two things are happening in regard to law. Laws are number one, being ignored. We just ignore it. We just tell the police, stand down. If they're doing this illegal act, that's fine because that meets with our agenda. But if they're doing anything that doesn't meet with our agenda, lock them up. Or secondly, laws are being enforced so discriminately by officials that what is legal for one is illegal for someone else. Let me just ask you, Jillian in Grenada and Connie in the Virgin Islands, let me ask you, Pastor Bolt, suppose I got upset at something you preached. 
So I decided to come to Whittier, California and make me a gallon jug Molotov cocktail and throw it in the window of your home. What would you do? You call the police. And I promise you, they'd arrest me. Public property provided by the dollars that taxpayers pay is no different. That property belongs to we, the people. It does not belong to us to destroy and burn down in the protest of anything. This kind of blind leap of faith all started during the Great Depression. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt promised, watch me now, that the almighty and benevolent federal government should, could, and would provide everything Americans needed. His first attempts, you I'm sure are well aware, although the media won't tell you, ended in total and absolute failure. He eventually learned this vital truth that Americans don't want something for free. They want to work. Now I know that's startling to the current generation that people actually wanted to work. And the reason they did is because that's the way God created human beings. My wife reminds me very, very often, men were made to work. Now as a result of this insanity back during the Great Depression, as a result of it, but, but how did he get elected? Well, he's gonna get elected in the depression by what? Saying the federal government will feed you. The federal government will give you a job. The federal government will give you a place to live. And what he found out was Americans want to work. They, were, they might want to hand up, but they don't want to hand out. At least that used to be our culture. So after the great failure, FDR uttered this memorable quote. Now remember, this is the guy that said, the benevolent federal government will, can give you everything you need to fix everything in your life. When it failed, he had to say, the federal government must, look at it up here, the federal, same guy, the federal government must and shall quit this business of relief. Watch the next part of it. To dole out or to hand out relief is to administer a narcotic, a subtle destroyer of the human spirit. The New Deal programs of the 1930s, including Social Security, began to slowly condition an entire generation to expect their government to take care of them before they went to school, during their working life, and during their retirement. In other words, we're dependent on Uncle Sam from the cradle to the grave. Do you know what this is? If you'd read my book, Culturally Incorrect, or get signed up for my class, you'd learn it's statism. It's the spirit of socialism. It's captivating thousands of minds in America right now, and it is the spirit of this present age, and it emphasizes, you don't get anything else tonight, get this. It emphasizes entitlement, and victimhood rather than personal responsibility, hard work, and resourcefulness. A generation has been raised with the expectation that somebody else owes them everything, and they do not anticipate having to work to earn anything. And when they don't get what they've been conditioned to expect through the lies 
perpetrated on them, how do they respond? Do they respond with tolerance and acceptance? Do they respond with restraint? No, 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 sir. No, ma'am. They resort to the baser instincts of fallen human nature. They revolt and they riot against anything they perceive represents the forces they claim have repressed them. And the result, certainly not order and peace. The result, anarchy. Underline this in your consciousness, Kennedy from Nigeria and Ben from Australia. Anyone or any system that attempts to take away your sense of self-reliance will soon condition you to surrender your freedom. America is nothing unless and until it becomes once again the place of the free exchange of ideas. Romans 16, 17, I want you to get this verse. I may have to quit. What time is it? Oh, okay. I'm going to give you this. Don't you go anywhere. I'm going to give you this, and then I'm going to come right back here next week and continue on. But this verse should become your standard of conduct right now. Romans 16, 17 and 18. It, I believe as much as any verse in your Bible, explains accurately the social conditioning that America's being led through right now. Here's what your Bible says. I ask you to look out for those who cause people to be against each other. What's the premise? Where are we starting from? That all men are created equal. All men are created equal equal and are endowed by their creator, not the government, with certain inalienable rights. And that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to go back to that verse. I, I want to get it in your spirit. Brothers and sisters, Romans 16, 17, I ask you to look out for those who cause people to be against each other and who upset other people's faith. They are against the true teaching you learned. So, stay away from them. Such people are not serving our Lord, Jesus Christ, but are only doing what pleases themselves. It continues. They use fancy talk and fine words to fool the minds of those who do not know about evil. I ask you to look out for those who cause people to be against each other. We must and we always will forever stand up against injustice everywhere but we will also refuse to be manipulated by fear and maintain our personal ability to discern truth for ourselves. There's this one small consideration. Revelation 14, 9. If anyone worships the beast 
and his image. If anyone receives his mark on their forehead or on their hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. Fury poured into wrath. He will be tormented with fire and brimstone, you backslidden preacher. And the holy angels of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment will rise up forever and forever, day and night, for those who worship the beast and his image or for anyone who receives his mark, the mark of his name. You'd say, well, this doesn't bother me. I'd never take the mark of the beast. You better listen for the next three minutes harder than you've ever listened to a preacher in your life. I'd, I'd never do that. Really? I wonder what is your price? What caused you to sell out? What caused you to turn your back on God already? Why, well, I've, seen, I've seen young girls sit in here and shout and dance and run, and then they meet some boy, and the next thing you know, they're smoking dope and jumping rope and ignoring everything about God. Oh, but you'd never take the mark of the beast. What's your price? Is it the lure of position? Maybe it's a promotion. By the way, how is your prayer life? How on fire is your Bible study? How's your church attendance? What caused your heart to already grow cold toward God? Who are you kidding? Self-preservation is a very, very powerful motivator. The fear of death will move people to commit unspeakable acts. And everyone who takes the mark will be consigned to eternity, separated from God in a place called hell. Read your Bible. Where men gnaw their tongues for pain, but the fire is never quenched. During the reign of the beast, no personal agency no amount of self-will or determination, no religious movement, no league of nations, no philosophical posturing, no academic or intellectual institution, no organization on this planet will be able to muster the combined strength to resist the abomination of desolation. Daniel said it, he will devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it into pieces. Hear this, preacher. You'll go where he tells you to go. You'll do what he tells you to do. You will speak what he demands you speak. Some of you have already begun that. You will parrot back his words with a blank and empty stare that good is evil and evil is good because he said so. Children will curse their parents. Parents will betray their children. 90% of people in America today say they believe in God. 40% say they're born again. 4% believe in hell. What about you? What about you? The deafening shouts from the modern sea of atheistic, agnostic, and apostate voices will never drown out the song ringing over the sapphire sill of heaven's gate and resounding from the depths of my heart tonight, all oh Lord God omnipotent reigneth forever and forever and forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. 
because he lives, we can live also. The time of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast is not yet come. So let me share a verse of scripture with you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe upon him, that can be you, whosoever would just believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. He loved, he gave. I believe, I live. Well, thank you for 15 minutes extra so that we can move on to the next installment of The Man, The Mark, next Wednesday night. I'm going to share with you seven headlines from the newspaper that prove Jesus is coming soon. I'd get everybody you know ready for that one. Amen? If you're glad you're not being conditioned to accept things you don't believe in, right there where you are, shout, I'm free. Type it in. Claudette in Jamaica, Joyce in Fiji, Jenny in Arizona, Tina in Tennessee, Cheryl somewhere. I don't know where Cheryl is. She's, she's out there somewhere. Cheryl's in Wisconsin. And Jordan's in New Jersey. John 16, 33. Jesus said, I've said these things to you, that in me, meaning Jesus, you may have peace. Peace in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. <laughs> and this is the victory that does overcome the world, even your faith. I've got some really great things for you. Those of you who are going to support preaching like this. That's really all I should say. And, and 10 or 20 people ought to sow $1,000 right now to say, I can't, we, America can't do without a voice like this. That's the reason the enemy attacked me with vocal cord cancer. But here I am, preserved for such a time as this. For your gift of any amount tonight, do the best you can. I went back into the archives. I wrote this book called Tribulation to Triumph. It's a good one for right now. I wrote it in 1991. The foreword was written by my pastor, the great late Dr. Lester Sumrall, and the book was dedicated because I wrote it the year she was born to my daughter, Ashton Blair. She's right now overcoming that vicious physical attack and I got word from her today. She's celebrating the things of God and doing great. So praise God for it. I'll send that to you for your gift of any amount. I also am going to send you a four CD series called Miss the Mess. I dare you to type in right now. I can miss that mess. Yeah. Four messages. Number one, miss the mess. Number two, your greatest opposition attracts hell's greatest attention. Number three, the sin of prayerlessness. Number four, how to make your prayers effectual. It's all yours just for the asking when you sow a gift of any amount or you can have both of those if you sow $40 or more. So please, help us out tonight. Thank you for letting me get through that whole message. You're a blessing. I hope you enjoyed every moment. And remember, I read every single one of your comments, and I pray over them. You say, Pastor, that's thousands and thousands. I know. Sometimes my eyes get tired. But I bless you for being there with me holding up the blood-stained banner of the cross of Jesus Christ. I love you, and I'll see you again 
Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. I've got another great message in store for you. Now be healed, spirit, soul, and body. Be blessed. Be freed. May you prosper as your soul prospers. May you live in health and victory. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything to do with you and your family for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Time to sow now. Let's break a record tonight. Can we do it? I believe we can. Do it. It's right there on your screen. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work. To use your smart giving, open your text messaging app and send a text to the number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space WHC. If it's your first time using smart giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus and enter your giving method and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you're already registered, the process is the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space WHC, and you'll receive your receipt immediately. If you'd prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.